Hey there, viewer or listener to people on the audio version. Uh, before we get to tonight's intro and show with Ben Shapiro, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, and laughing yogi Ramesh, I just wanted to let you know that because of your support of Mug Club, uh, there are some job openings available. New jobs are opening uh, all the time. It's at uh, lottowithcredit.com slash jobs. Lottowithcredit.com slash jobs is where you can go to apply right now. Specifically, we're looking for two people, uh, a DP slash director, someone who really knows their way around a camera, someone who would feel comfortable creating the kind of parody intro that you'll see next, uh, knows their way around uh, color correction, storyboarding, lighting, polishing uh, a professional final product, and a showrunner, someone who's sort of in charge of the master lists to make sure that the trains run on time, uh, communication takes place. There are a lot of moving parts on this show uh, that we try to create for you. And uh, we, of course, want to hire you first, people who are fans of this show. Almost everyone who works here came in because they were a fan and, of course, qualified uh, experience in the entertainment industry or media um, is necessary. Uh, otherwise, we'll be internships opening soon, um, in which position you will be routinely abused. Louderwithcrowder.com slash jobs. Be there. Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther. And Hopper. Look at me talking about social media back then. It ain't gonna do you any good now. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I mean when I'm talking about shadow banning and big corporations and censorship. All right, there are broader ideas at work, mainly what YouTube and its conglomerates say is and isn't allowed on my channel. 14 straight hours of staring at a half Asian lawyer. These are the things you think of. You ever done that? You can read the guidelines, and follow the updates. It doesn't matter if you follow their rules or not. YouTube doesn't care. You know what they do? They chain you. They find a way to stop your content, not at first. But right when you hit that three million subscriber mark. But see, it actually comes as an unmistakable relief. See, because they're afraid. And now they see, for the very first time, how a conservative late night show can compete. Yeah, they saw. In the last year, they saw what we were. The sketches. The references. The whole Louder with Crowder production, we were more than just some guy owning libs on a webcam or some kid with a few dang memes. And we were continuing to grow. They finally know that it's too late to stop us. See, to realize all your life, all your bogus copyright claims, all your false DMCAs, all the attempt to deplatform, it was all the same thing. It was all the same dream. A dream that you had of trapping conservatives in a locked room. A dream about being woke. But unlike any of the other dreams, in this one, there's a mug at the end of it.
the, the bully toady with too much dye in because Ooh. he has to punch the fist to signify toughness, but Ooh. he has a wrist injury, carpal tunnel. We don't know what it is yet. I don't, by the way, I have Ben Shapiro on the show oh, today. Oh, uh, nice. tough. Prime Minister Trudeau on the show today. We do, we uh, do. Special guest with our, our Laughing Yoga in the show today. Of course, in third chair is always my favorite lovable drunk, uh, Brodigan. You can follow him at Brodigan. How are you, McBrody? Um... Doing a lot better now that I have I've got 24 hours of getting Amy Schumer out of my system. Yes, oh, this is she was a geez. really rough day oh, God, for people who yeah. were members uh, of Mug Club and didn't get to watch it because YouTube wouldn't let us show it. Nah, nope. quarter black hair showing your hood. What's up, man? Uh, Gerald Morgan Jr. G Morgan Jr. What's the wine of the day? Uh, wine of the day is. The Oh, Sorry. oh, we have to bleep gosh. right away. What was that? The stag. The stag, because you're a bachelor party. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see went that. to Thunder Down Under and uh, on overlays, making sure sources are correct. We have Too Cute Maddie, or as she's known at the Young Turks, not welcome. So, uh, question of the day today, <laughs> before we move forward, there's two. First one, uh, again, we've been getting hundreds of letters of people saying they're not receiving notifications. A lot of oh, you wow, out yeah. there, even though you've hit the notification bell. Yes. Have you been experiencing this? Comment below. You are our polling data. Second, uh, we'll be getting into the new movie to do away with the Electoral College this week we've been talking about. Yay. So I want to know which Democrat <laughs> idea do you think is most <laughs> indicative of them being sore losers? Abolishing the Electoral College? Packing the Supreme Court with more justices? Let me know. Uh, you look like you were about to say something there, Brodigan, right off the top. Uh, no, I was, trying to th I was trying to think what I thought that the... Uh... <laughs> You were trying to think what you thought? Yes. This is off to a great start. Ben, ben Shapiro walks in and the IQ points, yes. ra I don't know, it's, raise it, about it's, 12. It's, it's, it's Amy Schumer. I'm like, I, I'm half, half can't think and half have like well, Amy Schumer You know what? It's, it's, that's, a, that's actually a good point. For people who that's didn't rude. watch yesterday, yeah. they, right away, we do we do a private test stream sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. They hit us right away and removed <laughs> our ability to stream the Amy Schumer special. So uh, before we start, actually, after spending all day watching, reviewing the Amy Schumer special in my club, that... It's really hard to find. It's like a soul suck. It's yeah. hard to find yes. the funny in anything. We all needed to reset our brains. So actually, mm. here to help us with that, we have tonight the guru of laughter, the laughing yogi, Ramesh Padney. Ramesh Padney, mm. can you please uh, help us here today? It's okay to choose to laugh, just like me, Ramesh Padney, the laughing yogi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Walter. <laughs> Never been happier for a sponsor. Thank, Thank you, Crowder. Not yes, only for yes. the Yogi, but also that uh, that was our lead bit. Not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Not to Everyone ready to laugh uh, for real? This is yes, a real story. Please, yes. Chlamydia is on the rise in Quebec, my home promise, uh, province. <laughs> it's the promise of chlamydia. It's a problem. Quebec, faster than anywhere else in Canada. This comes from Montreal wow. blog. Uh, some blame the rise of dating apps, and doctors believe that the availability of anonymous sex makes it harder to track outbreaks to encourage uh, Quebecers to get checked. The country has yeah. actually established yeah. an anonymous hotline. Oh. Oh, that's helpful. Hello, yes, STD hotline. Thanks for calling me back. Yes, I am a Canadian citizen. That's not important right now. Listen, hypothetically speaking, let's say someone uh, were hanging out at, say, Adonis in the village. How long after that would it stop burning and weeping? It's a, it's a valid oh question. My gosh. <laughs> the weeping is a problem. Uh, going I back to domestic news, what are you? See, here's the thing, Brody. Every time you do that, he puts up his hand. Like, what's? Your, are you hitchhiking? Or oh you no, I was, I was, I was, I was going to add. I know, the, I the thought Beto, that too. The, uh, what? Tr Trudeau joke. I was just, I was sitting here wondering who would win in a fight, Justin Trudeau or Beto? Ooh, mm. that'd be like a double uh. knockout with a limp wrist. <laughs> Accidentally, yeah. At the yeah. same time, like slap each other. Uh. And when they were unconscious, the ghost of Che Guevara would just mercilessly rape them. Here oh, in America, wow. nice. going back to domestic news, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez is now blaming her recent approval rating drop on sexism and racism. Oh yeah, of did course. you see this? Yeah, we have that. Uh, we have that <laughs> tweet there. Uh, here's the thing: oh, recent gosh. polling actually has shown that anti-woman, anti-minority sentiments are actually on a steep decline. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately for her, the jury's still out on retards. Oh my God. Uh, God. <laughs> it kind of takes a nosedive right there at the end. Yeah, yeah. I can totally see oh, that. So here's factual. the deal. When, when I do stuff like this and do the research, you have to read through the tweets that she did. There was actually three or four that she did in a row. And right after that, people are saying, like, praising her for being articulate, like, super smart on the Ooh. economy, it, it having all kinds how, of degrees. Like, right. like, are you I know talking people, about they the consumed same? a bucket of salt water before logging on Twitter. <laughs> uh, but that, Different humans. They had to. She's intelligent in comparison to who? Because yeah, exactly. considering her followers, 
She's like the idiot king. Yeah, I guess so. She's like there's a, plenty of idiots out there. She's I like guess, the so. leader of her. As Pentelis would say, she's like the uh, she's like the messiah of uh, her own cult yeah. of f***ing retards. Um, but the funny is, I, I actually if think you don't know Pentelis, that's a bang on that Pentelis. Is bang on, oh, no, that's so close. I, I, speaking of Quebec, I actually think like the, the most offended by that joke. Retards. Just yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't want to put Let's her in study. this. You yeah. said that mm. word again. We're going to get in oh, trouble. Yes. Uh, speaking we'll of crazy, a new report actually just came out that says daily marijuana use could. <laughs> all right, hold hold your comments. <laughs> it could be linked to psychosis. This comes from NPR, oh, where you know they use it every day. It's believed <laughs> that consuming high-potency cannabis on a daily basis increases the odds of having a psychotic episode later. Uh, it goes on to describe the episodes as including detachment syndrome, yeah. intense mm -hmm. anxiety, and paranoia, which was honestly was surprising to me because so far we've been seeing great results using cannabis oil to help with Hopper's chemo oh. treatment. I didn't eat all the cheeses. The, the cops come... Where? What? Oh, no, I'm just sitting in... Wait, what? Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> buddy. I, I, I don't know what Hopper's worried about. Hopper. He's a white dog. <laughs> 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 Apparently, statistically speaking, he he's might safe, be combining right? that cannabis oil with methamphetamine. Yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. know you're going to get hate mail, right? The Rottweilers Any, only do crack. <laughs> anything that you say against marijuana, and you didn't say it, a study said it. Wasn't you? Wasn't on. You yeah, know you're no. getting hate mail. Well, though. yeah, and it's no, well, no, it's, it's totally it's, fine. Oh God, it was in the room. It's well known that it can. I don't know how much. It, man. I don't, I don't know. know how much it creates that as much as it can right, trigger yeah. it in people who already have those proclivities. I've said that later. Marijuana doesn't make people crazy, but people who are crazy and don't know they're crazy, it's like marijuana. Just it's just the key to the crazy door yeah <laughs> those, pushes you over, over the that crazy I mean, door up <laughs> those are the people instead of sending you hate mail actually think they're arguing with you right now right oh there you <laughs> go like, yeah oh uh, why don't you talk about marijuana i just did but you didn't say it cures cancer <laughs> you're right i didn't you're even trying to point for you just let's let's call this one a wash from you win you win continue it's oh, opening awesome. the door to the crazy just like that what was that movie with the kids in the attic flowers in the attic where the mom what? leave and they're like you never what? came for us mother i don't someone <laughs> Huh? Please comment. I think it was Let flowers in the attic. I think it was flowers in the attic. Are you that smoking pot? Like, no, I am not. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. No, it was a film where this mom, the, the husband dies, and she takes her kids to her mother's house, the grandma's okay. house, and then she locks them in the attic, and yeah. the grandmother Nicole convinces Kidman. her that she didn't. No, no, you're thinking about the others. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, and, and, and then she just locks the kids in the attic, and she never goes for them. And one of the kids dies, and like, you never came for his mother. And she's like, I never wanted you anyway. Terrible oh, film. Oh, showgirls? Wow. No. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. I think it's flowers in the attic. Let me know. Anyways, way. there's a mystery pooper tormenting Broadway. We're going to get to the Electoral College in a second. In case yeah. this but first, really real news. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the stink bomber, actually, this is true, struck during tryouts for the new Magic Mike musical where they used the audition room I like this guy. as a toilet. Comes from the New York Post. Uh, That's awesome. Fortunately, though, for the producers, the pile of shit was the best performer they saw that day. So they did really, <laughs> they yeah. came out... <laughs> Awesome. In comparison, in, in, oh in, in all honesty, Broadway's been shitty for about 25 years now. I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Oh, so you I, have to go off Broadway. Yes. You definitely do. You have to go off off Broadway. <laughs> Basically, Chicago. Off, off, <laughs> off, off Broadway. Look, go to a movie. Grand Rapids. There's, there's been a bunch of these stories where like somebody will go and poop in the park, right? Yeah. Or something like poopers have been. In, I don't. Have you ever? Anybody, no one cares about your vlog. Has anybody? <laughs> <laughs> my vlog. Has anybody ever done this in this? Like, have you ever pooped in a non-toilet area? Have I pooped in, yeah. in a forest? I was camping. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. it, it's it's messy, right? It's, it's not, disgusting. It's not fast. No. How do you do Wait, what this do you mean in it's not fast? Like, how does the location determine fast. the speed <laughs> no, 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 of ejection? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying in, in, in normal, like it's you're not going to do it in three seconds and run away. Nobody's going to see you. You're going to get caught. Well, you do if it's thing. If you do if it's a poop out of animosity. Yeah. It's I mean, defecation quick, with purpose. It's a quick I, I understand that, but sometimes oh. you can't predict how. Like, if I'm angry, I can't predict how the flow is going to be. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I can't go. Oh yeah, I'm good. I got three seconds. Wait, speaking of unpredictable. That oh is, uh, takes, How takes, that feel? takes, Thanks, uh, man. takes a, a mighty fast man to make it over there and back. Uh, finally, <laughs> was, I wasn't, I wasn't at all in news of the day, we have this <laughs> Japanese man who, oh. quote, married a hologram. Oh, good for him. You know what? I don't oh. even want, we don't even need the overlay. Just, here's a clip. It's a real thing. Okay. 
ね、あのまあ幸せのテンプレートみたいなのもありますけど、必ずしもそのテンプレートに当てはめればみんな幸せになれるわけじゃない。I think Suicide Forest will have a new visitor. So from the Jakarta Post, the beaming groom Akihiki Kondo said, "I've never cheated on her. I've always been in love with Mikusen." Uh, unfortunately, she can't say the same as before Akihiko.、Uh, she had lived a full life. Yeah, she had really. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She, she needs to be、this. with her own kind, Akihiko. Why can't you see that? She <laughs> needs to be with her own kind. Send her home. <laughs> She gets around. Yeah, she, I, I, I think she gave Tupac a bad、uh, computer virus. That's actually why he died. Yeah,、oh. he, he wasn't actually shot、Better、by Big. Big. He was supposed to wear his Norton.、Yes. And then McAfee had someone、uh, defecate through a hammock. So, oh my gosh!、Uh, no one saw that documentary. When I was talking about that in the、no. pitch meeting today, no one had seen the documentary on McAfee. No, dude, they, he's running for president. I, well, he always、he's、runs for president. For president.、Oh. H- him and、uh, <laughs> who's the other guy who always runs for president?、Uh, I don't、uh, know. It's like not Bob Barr. I don't know. There's some guy who always <laughs> runs for president. Mike Mike Brable. I have no idea.、Somebody. Now you're naming. Now you're just saying letters to form names.、Uh, Bob Jones. Is he actually running for president this time? Yeah. Again?、Really? Yeah. Again. Does he do a、is、new documentary every time? I don't know, no, but go watch the documentary. No. Look at the, ham- the hammock and the, what he would do with the hammock. He、disgusting. pooped through the hammock. I don't even guess. <laughs> what does that make? Guess. It makes like. No. Actually, he, he, he had the girls poop through the hammock on oh, him. Oh, stop it! Stop、oh. it! Stop it! That's just going to be one just because we're talking about. Yeah. Just because we're talking about the man doesn't mean that we have to be truthful about what he does in all of his spare time. Oops. <laughs> Just like Gerald with his blog no, no. in the forest. All right, no, no, no. <laughs> Let me just preface this as before we get to Ben Shapiro. No, no, no.、Uh, I like the Electoral College. Love it. Why?、Yeah. Just because Elizabeth Warren and Beto O'Rourke have now come out against the Electoral College. Here you go. We can have national voting, and that means get rid of the Electoral College. Wow! Yay! Uh, 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 getting rid of the electoral college is that an idea with your support? If if we really want every person to、It、vote, give them every reason to vote, we got to make sure their their votes count and go to the candidate of of their choosing. So I, I think there's a lot of wisdom in that, and it's something that we talked about on the campaign trail in Texas in that last Senate race. Getting a little presumptuous on the candidate、mm. of their choosing, aren't、yes, we? Better.、Right. By the way, follow Elizabeth Warren's Instagram. It's the best thing that <laughs>、really? exists. Yeah, you couldn't write satire as good. It's like, <laughs> oh, kids, I'm just. Oh, you're there. I didn't see you were there. I'm just gonna get myself a beersy beer. <laughs> <laughs> beersy beer. Let me get some powwow chow on、Hello, the way. Hello, eighteen to twenty-five year olds. She's just an awful, <laughs> awful candidate. I hear you guys hang out here. Yeah, and then and then yeah, she she would she's here's the weird thing about the two people who want to eliminate the electoral college. She's the kind of person who would accidentally mistake Beto because he's kick flipping as someone who would be a voting block for her to remove the electoral college. <laughs> it, it's it's like they've learned nothing from Hillary Clinton. Right. Oh, I know. What, one of the reasons like people hate it other than the fact that she's a, a bitch and kills people is. The, <laughs> What, what, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, 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 allegedly. Was was like the shameless pandering of、right. like you know how do、oh, you do、yeah. fellow kids and both、uh, Warren and Kamala Harris. It's like oh and Kirsten Gillibrand because that's all she knows how to do it、that's, and abortion. That, that's their yeah, entire campaign. Yeah, she knows abortion pandering and abortion.、Well. So okay, really quick, we, we've done a video、uh, before as a rebuttal to Adam、yeah. ruins everything on the electoral、uh, college. You can go watch that. But really、comedy. quickly, there are a、yeah. lot of reasons、uh, that getting rid of the electoral college is a bad idea. Okay,、yeah. um, one, it's, it's it's in the Constitution. Okay, founders intended it as a、kind、safeguard. A People act like the <laughs> the electoral college, by the way, is the only area of government in which we aren't a pure democracy. There are、no. tons of similar safeguards in the country. Supreme Court justices. They're not voted、yeah. on by a general populace. Every state gets two senators, regardless of population. We are not a pure democracy. It's a de- it's a constitutional republic. Democracy is mob rule. It's important that people understand that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And by the way, it's something. It's a system that has worked for 242 years. Wrong. So be very careful. Wrong. Who? No,、What? 242. No,、What? you're wrong. It, it, it's it's not a system、wrong. that's worked.、Dang、I think the, the Democrats are actually right here. And per- per- what? Personally speaking, I honestly think they should spend as much time and resources as it takes to convince 48 other states, so like California <laughs> and New York,、uh, make all the decisions for them. I, I thought you had another stroke for a second, <laughs> but you made a good point. Another reason I want to rattle off through the electoral college yeah, reasons yeah, yeah. really go, quickly. Go, go.、Uh, of course, there are regional interests, right? Without the electoral college, the con- the concern, of course, is about l- states with low populations. Yeah, all that would matter. 
are the opinions of people in urban areas. Okay, that's that's the reality. When yeah. they tend to have different views than people in suburban areas. Right. 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 Yeah. Vastly different views. Which, which is actually a major problem we have in New York because you have basically Manhattan and Brooklyn making decisions for all of upstate exactly. New York. Yeah. yeah. Right. But they have no say in. Well, and that's a good example. That leads me to point three. Swing states are actually they're more transient than large cities. Okay. Well, who would you rather have a disproportionate amount of power of the American electorate? States like Ohio, Florida, Pennsylvania, or at one point. Texas, now yeah. Michigan, yeah. I think Wisconsin, places yep. that were never considered to be swing states, or only four or five major cities. Which, by the way, they have disproportional amounts of crime, poverty. Take your crappy pick. Yeah. Cities so, suck. Crap. Good cities example suck. is popular, but you're just talking about New York, uh, or, or Los, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, a handful of cities. Yeah. Take New York City and Amazon, right? Yeah. They kicked out Amazon. Just a yeah. few people Free money. in Manhattan. They kicked it out. Free money. Now apply that to those people being able to determine that Amazon can't be in any state, yeah. even a state, yeah. five, even five states over, because mm -hmm. Cortez has yeah. an opinion. Another example would be energy. People yeah. in New York and Los Angeles should be voting to take away tens of thousands of clean coal jobs or, 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 or renewable resource jobs. And I know you don't think it's a renewable resource, but thank God for fracking, because you have an yeah. opinion in a major city, you should determine how everybody else lives across the country. That's why the Electoral College exists. By the way, another interesting thing, the Democrats have their own Electoral College. Yeah. Which is, which is, by the way, far worse. If we're talking about pure democracy, <laughs> they're the only ones who have super delegates, which I don't really understand, but apparently just gives a lot of power disproportionately to assholes. That's, <laughs> that's how, awesome. that is Sounds my like understanding super, yes. of Sounds super that's about it. That's delegates. About it. And Hillary actually won the popular vote in the 2008 primaries, Ooh. not Barack Obama. Uh -oh. So Ouch. this is just another example of Democrats wanting others to play by different rules than they do. Yeah, poor Hillary, right? She gets beat with the super delegates and then she gets beat by the second worst <laughs> candidate ever to run for president. Like, you just can't catch a break if you're her. And you got she beaten yeah. by grammar lessons. I, 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 ah, beaten. I, oh. I, I, just, I just wonder who got suicided after the 2008 primaries. What? Because Hillary lost. Yeah, yeah I know, so but I, oh, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand. Well, she tends to kill someone it's after just she everyone. Loses, she so. just kills all she of the people. She doesn't kill anybody. My, the main suicided. reason here is, is that it's, it's a change uh, based on a disingenuous argument, okay? Yeah. Democrats just want to do away with the Electoral College because they think it will benefit them. Why? Because right now, they don't like the rules. Yeah. If you don't believe it, just look at how the headlines have changed from year to year in what they want. And it's not just the Electoral College that Democrats want to change. This is a pattern. Let me go through a few examples. Yeah. One I know that is, yeah. is, is your favorite, the filibuster. Yep. Democrats already ditched the filibuster in the Senate. They changed the rules yeah. because they thought it would benefit them. Here's something that's really painful for both conservatives and Democrats to admit. Mitch McConnell was right <laughs> when he warned Democrats like that they would regret it. Look, here is your oracle. If you want to play games, set yet another precedent that you'll no doubt come to regret. Say to my friends on the other side of the aisle, you'll regret this, and you may regret it a lot sooner than you think. And I really, really <laughs> want him to be wrong. <laughs> I know, right? God, so by the way, they already have. They yeah, already they, regret it. That's why they, Kavanaugh was as easy to be confirmed. Well, I don't want to say easily confirmed, but yeah, more yeah. easily but, confirmed than you would have liked. And, and also, yeah. look how far they had to go to try and stop the confirmation because they yeah. didn't have the filibuster. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if they if they had had it, they would have been able to probably at least postpone it for a while. But this was one of the most horrible decisions I've ever seen Congress make. You took out one of the things that was there as a protection to make sure that the minority had a voice when something was being rammed down their throats and a way to make sure that they could hopefully stop something or at least change people's mind. Right. And now nobody's going to put it back in. Right. And I think that's a problem. Republicans missed an opportunity and well, Democrats screwed but up. But you think Democrats don't care. Why? No. They just want to change the rules again. Yeah. How? By now adding seats to the Supreme Court. Before I move on to that, hit the notification bell. Let me know if you're receiving notifications, if you're subscribed, because apparently a lot of you aren't, so please bookmark the page. Join MugClub, letterscutter.com slash MugClub, and subscribe on iTunes for the audio version. We don't know how much longer we're going to be here, and we certainly can't upload our Amy Schumer reviews. Uh, my next one, yeah, the <laughs> Supreme Court case. seats. Okay, so now you have Beto, or uh, as we know, Robert Francis O'Rourke, and other Democrats <laughs> have been pitching, uh, adding a bunch of seats to the Supreme Court, even doing oh, away geez. with things like term limits. You don't, you don't have to take my word for it. Some have proposed, uh, do you want five Democrat justices and five Republican justices and those 10 then choose another five justices between them? Um, do we it's add to the problem. number what? of justices on that court in another way? Do we set term limits for those justices so there's some predictability? All the justices. Uh, I like you less than Drake. <laughs> wow. Ooh. That's, I that's was running something, through the six. I'm sorry. That's From not at all like commercial. Commercial. Yeah, <laughs> That's how we know. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. you know I'm this sprite. is a very, very white show. Yes. By the way, if you want to apply to work here, we could really use a black. Ah. Um, <laughs> I mean, another we, three quarters a, a of one. Black. 
Yeah. yeah. We, Come on. At least more than half. You like yeah. metal. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you lock your doors when you roll through the wrong area of town. Nice. No, that, um, that's true. Here's the thing. Democrats, they have, a, they have a long history of wanting to pack courts, right? Yeah. This goes back to FDR. He yeah. wasn't able to do it, mm -hmm. but he wanted to do it. Yeah. This is how it works with Democrats. If you don't have a majority in the court, eh, just wait till you're in office, then just add a bunch of seats to get a majority and just appoint your guys. And that's not how, that's not how this And what's works. crazy to me is that they constantly whine about Donald Trump, about President yeah. Trump eroding political norms with his mean tweets. They're the ones actually trying to undermine the foundations of our government from the people who created it. And, and just a quick question here. Like, we're talking about a court with judges. These are supposed to be some of the most fair-minded judges in all of the land, some of the most educated people that we can possibly find that can put on blinders and judge a case on its merits alone. And we're talking about Republican and Democrat judges. Mm -hmm. I, I think we've missed the boat here. The Supreme Court is not supposed to be people that have biases. Exactly, it's yeah. supposed to be people that view the law, and that's it. I mean, it but it never fails. Where are you going to find someone who I know, is I'm not a conservative saying, like, or liberal? Is, well, you're like, going to have to look in some no, coffee no, no, house where someone calls themselves. You're going to, you know, who you're going to have as judges the people who, up until election day, between Donald Trump and Hillary, don't Clinton, say go, a word. Yeah, you know what? I'm not quite sure yet. <laughs> well, I'm not saying change your <laughs> mind. You can maybe convince me. <laughs> My vote's on the table. What are you going to give me? You want that person no, in charge of Roe v. I Wade? Don't, I don't want that person. What I'm saying is, you can be a Republican or a Democrat, but the second you put on that robe and you sit on that bench, you have to put that aside, yeah. Yeah. and you have to make a fair decision. Or, and we don't, we don't look at the Supreme Court like that anymore. All I care is that you're a rapist and you sail through. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I mean, we could do that, or uh, Democrats can get the idea of more justices in, in the public uh, sphere so people actually agree with it. Did you say spear? Yeah. I said spear. Spear yeah, with, like, with an H. Okay, the, the, you know, All right, continue with this point where we are <laughs> waiting with bated breath. Yes, they can, make, they can make it really popular. Donald Trump can win, and then he can add five judges. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, why not, you know, why don't you just start adding judges now? Tweet that, Donald Trump. Watch their heads explode. Why, I think, I think oh, we crap. should add 100 million judges. And then all we Republicans. Should, we should do away with all the Electoral them. College. What? Beto is so eat with reverse psychology. It was a skateboarding. Like, what? I want the Electoral College now. Exactly. <laughs> High five, guys. Uh, Kickflip. That would be Kickflip. brilliant. Number three. The vo this is another example where they would just want to change the rules. The voting age. Right now, Pelosi just, just, just said publicly no. she's always been for lowering the voting uh. age to, wait for it, 16. I myself have always been for lowering the, vote, the voting age to 16. No, you haven't. I think it's really important no. to capture she said the voting kids when age. they're in high school, when they're Seems. interested in all of this, Before when they're they learning about, about government, history. to be able to vote. By the way, oh, your Lord. sweet 16 was centuries ago. <laughs> <laughs> She sounded a little the weird. The entire Democrat Catcher. idea runs contrary to this. I, I don't understand. They, they've campaigned for raising gun ownership from 18 to 21. Yeah. So you aren't responsible enough to own a tool for hunting at 18, but you should be able to vote in someone who's willing to kick out Amazon five <laughs> states away? <laughs> and completely kill your economy. But hold on. Yeah. When's the last time you had a conversation with a 16-year-old? They don't, I'm sorry, 16-year-olds can be smart. Most of the time, you don't know anything. And specifically, you don't know anything about how the world works, yeah. right? You tend to be very liberal when you're in high school if you have any political leaning at all. And then when you actually get out in the world and have a job, you're like, oh, crap, conservative's the way to go. Free market, love it. But Bottom until then, you don't. Yeah. So I am not letting, I'm sorry, I don't want anybody. By the way, your yes. rhetorical question of when was the last time you spoke with a 16-year-old was answered by pedophiles everywhere. <laughs> The comment there's, section at Salon right now is like, oh, 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 this morning. There's usually Putting not a lot of conversation going on. Over cinnamon so. toast crunch. Yeah. <laughs> going over Gerald's point, do they even teach U.S. history when you're 16 in the first place? Well, I mean, I, mean, I when I was in school, not. that was like a that was a junior class. Yeah. yeah, I didn't learn U.S. history at all because I was raised in Canada. So what I did during history class was fall asleep. The number four, <laughs> uh, it's incredibly boring. <laughs> nice. We just said it's just because ah. you were in Canada. We just said, Uncle, Uncle. <laughs> Keep and then we put our, us. we put your queen on our money. Uh, <laughs> point number four. I know we kind of gloss. The Constitution. Oh, no, let's yeah. go with that. that Ultimately, thing. the Democrats—they're constantly in favor of changing the rules because they don't even the—they don't honor the most foundational rule book for the country, the Constitution. We know they're yeah. openly against the Second Amendment, right? Yeah. Even openly calling for its repeal, and yeah. a lot of people say no, they're not. If you talk about a mandatory buyback, like in Australia, yeah. You're basically advocating for repealing the Second yep. Amendment. And by the way, continually they call for more laws against hate speech, which would essentially repeal the First Amendment. doesn't stop there. Some of them completely want to actually abolish the Senate. This is something that's actually oh, wow. been floated. This is, <laughs> again, it's just, it's a constant changing of rules to undermine the constitutional republic that is the United States and the electoral college. It's just one in a long line of stupid ideas. Yeah, and then you put out misinformation about the Second Amendment, that it doesn't actually say that you can have arms. It says you can be a part of, of a militia. You do it on purpose. Do you know how easy it is to screw this up, by the way? 
way. I don't think people understand that point. It is incredibly easy to mess up something that is working, right? right. You don't have to yeah. try very, very hard to do that. To get it to go from 95 to say 98 is incredibly difficult without screwing it up. It's working really well, okay? Yep. The, 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 you can F it up so fast, stop. Right. Stop trying to change it. And they're doing it just for short-term gain that's and votes. Thing too. They, don't yeah. they don't understand that if they do away with the electoral college, how the elections would be decided if someone doesn't win the majority of the vote. It's not a plurality. It's a majority of the vote. And then these are the same yeah. people who bitch about the two-party system, man. Right. Well, how do you think, what do you think is <laughs> going to happen with the electoral college if we have a situation like Canada where someone can win with 30-something percent of the vote? Right. Exactly. Do you, do you know who's going to be? De- I just, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm very upset. <laughs> do, do me a favor. Mac just McAfee. think two or three steps down the line, Democrats. Just do me a quick favor. Think two or three moves down and go. Oh yeah, that's a really bad idea. Let's let's walk it back. No, that's they don't think it's do. a bad idea as long as it serves them in the moment. And I this know. is no politician should be doing this, whether it's Donald Trump or Elizabeth Warren or Beto. You should not be selling out the futures of American citizens to pay out voters now. Right. That's the issue here. And this is what I know people all the time. Oh, I don't like labels. You know what? I'm okay. I'm okay with the label conservative. I'm okay that this is what separates conservatives from liberals or leftists or progressive. They're, okay. They're, there's proof for you that we're different. They called themselves liberals. They call themselves progressives. They're the ones switching the labels to mean different things <laughs> yeah. over time. We've pretty much always called ourselves conservatives. Yeah, it's much. not really changed. Yeah. And by the way, our views have been pretty consistent. Theirs never are. People try to say, well, what, what about conservatives and free speech? Okay, sure, there might have been a couple of yeah. Republicans along with Tipper Gore who wanted to put <laughs> warning labels on CDs. But if you look at the mainstream conservative interpretation of the Constitution on court, it really it really hasn't changed all no, that much. No, pretty consistent. Yeah. No, it, it, well, we, we, this is something else. We, well, this is something that they try to do as a trump card. Is well, what about the fact that conservatives are racist? Like, <laughs> haven't you changed the party? To the, you flipped because flip. first off, you, I'm not going to let you do it. Okay, okay, Chank. Okay, John Oliver. I'm not going to let you say. Well, what about the fact that no, we're not racist. We've never been the party of racism. Do you mean the conservative? interpretation, the platform that interpreted the Constitution mm. in that no man has a right to own another man signed into mm. law by Abraham yeah. f***ing Lincoln? Mm. Those racists? Yeah. Ooh, mm. Party switched. What are mm. you talking about? Strom Thurmond, get the hell out of here. <laughs> our, our, our principles have been the same. We, if we want to have an honest conversation about the state of our country and you have a problem with the Electoral College, okay, fine. But don't go trying to change the rule book every time an election doesn't go your way and then turn around and tell us about the erosion of our American values because we don't want to let some caravan from a crap hole country in, okay? We just don't want you to be chastising us. I hope I've clarified my points. Ben Shapiro after this. Dance. Dance. This is for all you lovers out there. Dance. History is gonna change. This. This. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Look like he's starting to go in his transition, don't he? Yeah. About a week away from getting his d*** chopped off. It ain't gonna do you any good now. Stupid little piece of sh**. <laughs> this. <laughs> the f***. <laughs> <laughs> Pin broke. <laughs> Hercules, man. My ass is just failed. You're gonna light the studio on fire. <laughs> Ladderwithcrowdershop.com <laughs> supports bait. We don't kill them. So purchase your baby onesie at louderwithcrowdershop.com today. Now for Trick Tips with Beto. Remember, when cops pull you over, you can refuse a breathalyzer. Just say to the cop, oh my god, look at that thing. Then run away for the next 20 years. Don't be a Beto. Join Mug Club for $99 a year, $69 a year for students, veterans, or active military. It's a stick-up, apparently, according to this song. Yeah. Uh, hey, speaking of things up, you know, our, our next guest will never look me in the Skype. 
Right before the show, he's always looking down. So you know what, Ben, just for this, look at my son poison. Look a, at this. It's look a power at move. it. Look at it at Ben Shapiro. That's the people who don't know Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro. My wife applied my suntan lotion. Do you want me to take off my pants and show you my upper thighs, Ben? No, you've done that before on my show. <laughs> this is pleasant. Those were Ranger panties, and by the way, I owe you a pair. Uh, have you ever gotten so sunburned that you wanted to throw up? Uh, not that I wanted to throw up. That's, but, that's a new one. But you get queasy. You get really queasy. And I don't know if it was heat stroke or sun poisoning, but my wife got, and I got into a hell of an argument because she said she didn't trust me with sun lotion. She applied it. Look! Look at it, Ben! <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, well done by your wife. I mean, yeah, frankly, you know what? I mean, <laughs> as a man who's watched you be waterboarded and this... enjoyed it thoroughly, <laughs> I can say that, I can say, you know, thanks to your wife. I appreciate it. You know what? If it was her lying low and there was something that I did that aggravated her months back and this was, I would just have to give that one to her. I'm just going to have to give it to her. Uh, let me ask, okay, so Ben, you have a new book out right now. Uh, I want to make sure I have this right. It's The Right Side of History, How Reason and Moral Purpose Made the Great West. It's going to be released, uh, well, I guess it was released uh, on Tuesday, March 19th. Um, so before we get to that, I want to talk with you about this. has been kind of making the rounds quite a bit. You know, the Senate passed a bill that would allow states to punish businesses uh, that take part in bo Israel boycotts, right? That's kind of how it's been sort of surmised. Uh, yeah. Rubio plays a big role in this. What's your position on this as someone, obviously, who both of us support Israel's right to exist, but also the ability for uh, businesses to practice business freely? 100%. Well, the, here, here's what the bill actually does. So the, the, what the bill actually does, it doesn't punish businesses that boycott Israel. What it says is that the state will not contract with businesses that boycott Israel. So there, there are plenty of laws like this that are on the books with regard to, for example, racial discrimination. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of boy laws on the books like this with regard to uh, anti-discrimination in, in LGBT communities. Uh, this is particularly true in places like California and New York, where if you are a government agency, you can't do business with a business that is refusing to do business with black people, for example. Right. So this is not the state going out of its way to quote unquote punish people who are anti-Israel. I mean, the state doesn't owe you a contract. Uh, it's the state deciding which businesses it will do business with. T to be honest with you, I'm, I'm somewhat indifferent on the law. I don't mm -hmm. think it's a violation of the First Amendment. Uh, at the same time, I generally am not a huge fan of the government you know, conditioning its contracts with people on the political views of those businesses. I right. just think that's, that's generally a mistake. So uh, I, I'm not a huge detractor of this particular bill. I'm also not a huge advocate for this particular bill, but I think it's important to be accurate about what the bill does. And it's not you know, forcing businesses not to be pro-BDS. If they want to be pro-BDS, they can be pro-BDS. They just can't do business with the state. Right. Yeah, I, th I think that's important to note. Um, and there have been a lot of people who've taken this out of context and make it seem as though basically they're, they're banning businesses who boycott Israel. Um, we're sort of getting into the business of kind of like no bid contracts. When you're talking about companies having contracts with the government, this changes the working relationship quite a bit. Speaking of, uh, of this, speaking of Israel, uh, this week, not a lot of coverage because it happened, I believe, Right before New Zealand, uh, I don't know the, the final tally, several rockets launched from Gaza into Tel Aviv. Uh, you can see the footage of it being stopped uh, by the Iron Dome. How do, you, how do you see this moving forward from here, and how would you like to see this moving forward? Again, there I mean, was a lot of coverage of the forward. rockets. Yeah, I mean, there was no coverage of the rockets. There was no coverage of another terror attack in which a father of 12 was, was murdered in Israel, 47-year-old rabbi's father of 12. Uh, th these sorts of attacks are just completely ignored by the world media because when it's Israel involved and we pretend that Israel is not a member of, of the Western coalition and, and terror attacks against Israelis mm -hmm. are simply chalked up to anti-Israel sentiment as opposed to anti-Jewish sentiment. Firing rockets into the middle of Tel Aviv, which is a civilian area that is not in, quote, the West Bank right. uh, or in the Gaza Strip, obviously, is a pretty good indicator that maybe Hamas just wants to destroy Israel. Other good indicators include their charter, in which they say they want to destroy Israel, yeah. and all of their propaganda, in which they say they want to destroy Israel, and the fact that they've built terror tunnels instead of providing food for their people. The other uncovered story from the Gaza Strip is that Hamas is shooting its own citizens in, in the Gaza Strip. Seven people were shot this week by Hamas in the streets, uh, and they're arresting all the dissidents. The media don't ever find any of this stuff newsworthy. They find it newsworthy when Israel fights back, when Israel goes in and targets Hamas, right. uh, when Israel hits a, a school that Hamas is using as a military base, for example, then that becomes a world story. Uh, but but firing rockets into the middle of civilian areas in the biggest city in Israel, no, nah, it's not a well, big deal let, at all. Let me ask you this. Oh, thanks for shutting your phone off, Mr. Shapiro. You know uh, what? You know what, Crowder? I know you're so you're busy. You're far too busy for us Gentiles and our non-hatted skulls. Uh, here's the thing. What you just mentioned, I agree with you. But if you notice there's a schism where a lot of people think, oh, man, Israel just gets all the media coverage because the media is run by, the, run by Jewish executives. And so all of these people support 
support Israel, everyone in the entertainment industry, and then people who are pro-Israel say, well, no, listen, they're always sympathizing with Palestine. They're not covering the rockets being launched. It seems as though both sides have really dug in their heels and see the media as either being overtly pro-Jewish, pro-Israel, or completely anti-Israel. Why do you think that is? Because you have to be out of your mind to believe that the media are overtly pro-Israel. I mean, CNN, I, I went on CNN in 2014, and I said that they were essentially an outlet for Hamas. I mean, the, the, the CNN's coverage of these sorts of conflicts is inevitably geared toward Israel as the aggressor because the left-wing narrative is that Israel is the bad guy in this in this particular conflict for the same reason that, that rich people are generally seen as the bad guys in, in various conflicts around the world. The left, and all Disney films. It, the, the left largely says whenever there's someone successful and someone unsuccessful, it must be because the successful person somehow hurt the unsuccessful person. And they see that same conflict playing out in Israel. Israel is successful. Uh, it is a very economically prosperous society, has a lot of technology, has a, a very powerful military. Uh, and so the, the narrative is that that must be because they have disadvantaged the Palestinians. Israel has been trying desperately to hand over control of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip to the Palestinians for legitimately decades at this point. They did hand over full control of the Gaza Strip to the Palestinians in 2005. And the, rockets. the Palestinians promptly burned down all the greenhouses and elected Hamas. So it's worked out fantastically yes. well. And the charter is key. You know, if you sign up for iTunes and if you uh, read the agreement, it says, by the way, we're also going to kill your wife and family. You'd be like, oh, hold on a second. This seems odd to put in the agreement. Seems like you wanted me to gloss over that one, Tim Apple. Uh, let me ask you. I said Tim Cook. No, you didn't. There's the video. I said <laughs> Tim Cook. Why lie about this? It's just a flub that doesn't matter. Final question, though. This is one thing, as someone who, you know, is vehemently uh, defended Israel's right to exist. Do you see it as a problem, or a lot of detractors point to an inconsistency in them being sort of allies with Saudi Arabia, one of the biggest funders of terrorism? I understand the geopolitics as it relates to Iran, as it relates to the conflicts over there, and they need some kind of protection. That being said, the Saudi Arabia relationships, both with the United States government and Israeli government, doesn't sit well with a lot of people. What about yourself? Well, I mean, in an ideal world, obviously, you wouldn't be allied with any bad governments. The reality of the world, as President Trump has correctly stated, is that very often you're allied with bad governments against worse governments. And that's certainly the case with both the United States' relationship with Saudi Arabia and now the Israeli relationship with Saudi Arabia. You don't, unfortunately, get to pick all of your allies when it comes to world politics. Were that the case, then it would have been very difficult to side with Stalin to defeat Hitler during World War II. You're, you're constantly having to make choices about which people are, are worthy of siding with in order to stop worse people. Right. Uh, and I, I see that less as inconsistency and more as just the realities on the ground. That's, that's just a, a truism of politics generally. But we can agree, Saudi Arabian government, kind of dicks. Awful. Okay. Awful good. evil government. All right, yeah, good. Absolutely. So there we go. This is, this is why I appreciate you coming on, because if I say this, people are like, you're paid by big Shapiro money. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not Jewish. I just think that this stuff is uh, pretty reasonable. They have a right to exist, and they have rockets going into their uh, their uh, their main city there uh, from this strip. By the way, take the strip. Turn it into a strip mall for all I care. Uh, so your book, Right Side of History, wouldn't that be if – if Donald Trump could go in and call it Trump Gaza mm. Strip Ball – it would sell like hotcakes. Yeah, Everyone shows. would want to go there. No one even wants to go to strip malls, but I'd go to that strip mall, <laughs> uh, especially if it sat under the Iron Dome. So Right Side of History, the book, was released this week. Um, wh wh tell us, give us a briefer on this and uh, why you think it's important for everyone to read your book. You've talked about this, and obviously that's a good place. Everyone needs to read my book, but you've talked about specifically whether they agree with you politically, ideologically, or not. How, why is this book different in that sense? Well, well, what the book basically is about is why we're so angry at each other. We live in the freest, most prosperous civilization in the history of the world, and it is not close. And yet we are supremely pissed at each other. And that is because, in my view, we have forgotten the sort of ties that bind us together. And those are ties that have a long history, a 3,000-year history, going back through Sinai, through the, through the Sermon on the Mount, and including Greek thought as well. This kind of merger of Judeo-Christian values and Greek reason that, that interplay created the West and created all the values that we like today. So if you like science, if you like technology, if you're a big fan of free speech, if you're a big fan of living in a democracy, all of these concepts come out of the West. They don't come out of anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so we have to try and re-examine why it is that these concepts came out of the West and whether those concepts are, are rooted in something deeper and more valuable and that we can't just discard. I think that we, we sort of want to take the gains of Western civilization while ignoring the roots of Western civilization or even fighting against those roots. And I don't think you can do that. I don't think that you can fight Judeo-Christian values and at the same time talk about how you want to maintain all of the prosperity, equality, and freedom of Western civilization. You can't you can't remove the foundation from a building and expect the facade to stand. No, I think that's a good point. But you just talked about how kind of we're supremely pissed off at each other and examining why. Well, let me just say this. I, I, I always talk about this. I don't believe in finding common ground if there's the truth and the truth does not find itself on the common ground. People just heard you say 
that about Western civilization. People will read this book and they will be supremely pissed off. So are you, by default, adding to the polarization in simply pointing out the truth? That's my issue where you have a lot of people who shall remain nameless who go out and go, we're just going to build bridges. Well, okay, good example. I can't build a bridge with Hamas if in their charters to blow me up. Right. I mean, the, the, the book is also a clarification, obviously. And there is a view of Western civilization that Western civilization is inherently bad. I hope that the book convinces people that Western civilization is not inherently bad. But if it's your view that Western civilization is all about racism, sexism, bigotry, homophobia, and that all of those things can only be torn out by removing Western civilization at its root and replacing it with some sort of new socialist utopia or replacing it with tribal intersectionality, if that's your view, well, then... Let's clarify that view and let's have that argument because I think your argument sucks. But the, the, you know, again, the, the idea here is that America was based in certain values that are pretty much embedded in our founding documents. We haven't always lived up to those values, obviously. Sometimes right. we don't live up to those values today. But to suggest that America's values are about the evils rather than about the goods is to ignore the fact that the goods that have been produced by the West are uniquely Western and the evils that the West has produced are not unique to the West at all. They've been universal in virtually every human society. That's a very good point. Yeah, the virtues here are pretty unique to the West. And that's one thing also when you deal with more relativists who, or atheists, hardcore atheists, who say, well, if I need a God to tell me not to kill somebody, then I'm just crazy. And that God is great. Well, okay, hold on a second. What about a God to tell you to be merciful? Not all societies valued mercy, particularly not until uh, modern Christendom. What about a God that tells you to not cheat on your wife? What about a God who tells you to love your wife and speak to her tenderly? These are not universal values. There are certain values that we see in the West, particularly in the United States, that have not been embedded in other societies that do come directly from Judeo-Christian principles. Um, and it's always, it's always interesting to me that the hardcore atheists take the extreme arguments like, well, every society knows that killing is wrong. Even if we take that example, not all societies agree with that. You look at Native Americans. They didn't have a concept of personal property. And so you'd come home, your shit was gone because it wasn't technically your shit. You know, this is a, these are things that people don't think about. I'm sure you well, do. The, the fact is that even if you take the example of murder, it is true that virtually every society has a taboo against murder. That does not mean that the, the law extends to people beyond your tribe. So it's very easy to say, yeah, you're not allowed to murder people who are inside our tribe, like inside this, this camp right, right here. But over there, those guys, th those aren't humans over there. And also, if you happen to be a very powerful person, you do have the right to kill somebody who's below you on the social scale. You do have the right to, to kill people who are more weak and more vulnerable. To, to suggest that a universal taboo against murder is not, is not embedded in the Bible in a different way than it's embedded in pagan civilizations is to ignore the fact that child sacrifice was a regular thing in a lot of pagan civilizations. Right. Or Coney. I saw that movie. Taking the child soldiers. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. Remember Coney? No. You don't remember Coney? That was like the biggest document. You don't remember that? The big documentary, Coney, was this war. You remember that, Court of Black Air? That was a children campaign. Warlords. It was a campaign. And then the guy who made it went on a, like a Martin Lawrence style bender in LA. He was snorting coke and he was naked, I think, on Sunset Boulevard. And this went in a weird direction. I do, yeah. yeah, I did. Well, listen, you, you, saw, you saw the ride. You bought a ticket anyway. Um, all right. Let me, final question here, Ben, because uh, this has been an entirely reasonable interview. And I want some people pissed off with both you and myself because it's always what happens after these. Uh, you're giving a report card on Donald Trump here, especially as we're looking at the DNC candidates coming up. Uh, what would you give him overall? Cure. What would you give him overall? <laughs> and do you think he wins in 2020? Uh, you know, I, I think that the, I hate to hedge bets, but I didn't hedge my bets in the last election cycle, and then I lost lots of money. You did. So when it, so when it comes to you know, how President Trump is, is going to do uh, in this election cycle, it's almost entirely dependent on two factors. Can he shut his face? Will mm -hmm. sounds come out? Can he stop his tweeting thumbs? And also, will the Democrats nominate somebody completely loony? Uh, or will they try to go toward the more electable direction and nominate someone who's half loony like Joe Biden? Right. Uh, or are they going to go completely bat bleep and nominate you know, Bernie Sanders? Is that, is that the way they go? So yeah, if President Trump could shut up and allow the focus to be on Democrats, I would say that he has a better than 50 percent chance of, of being reelected. Yeah. If, however, he continues to do what he's doing and, and drive away suburban women, he lost the popular vote by two and a half million votes last time. He ran the narrowest gauntlet in American history. He won the three key states by a combined 80,000 votes. He won fewer absolute votes in Wisconsin than Mitt Romney won in Wisconsin. The real story of 2016 is nobody showed up to vote for Hillary Clinton, number one, because they didn't like her, and number two, because they figured she was going to win. That same phenomenon is not going to take place again. Right. Democrats are going to show up. They're going to show up in big numbers. So President Trump's best bet here, he's not going to convince people that he's a wonderful human being because people think what they think about him already. 
Right. The, the, the best bet here is just shut up. Well, just not just shut up. The, the, reason, the reason for him shutting up would all, uh, is more helpful to him is because the economy is doing so well. The New York Times right, exactly. is even trying to find excuses as to why it works and attribute it to Obama. If he can just be silent and direct people toward his record on the economy and then say, hey, by the way, uh, now Kamala Harris, and she's saying whatever Kamala Harris says, or <laughs> by the way, here's, Eliz here's Elizabeth Warren's Instagram. Have fun. That's all he needs to do, and he wins. I agree. If he could get out, it's like a race to the bottom. If he can get out of his own way, this should be very winnable because of the economy. Uh, if they run Joe Biden, I don't think it matters as long as Donald Trump is just a little bit more disciplined. But um, I don't think they're going to run Joe Biden. I think it's going to be Kamala Harris. I, I think it's going to be the double, triple minority factor. And maybe they'll put Beto on there because I don't know. He's a wiener. They need a weirdo who, who <laughs> tries to feed his wife poo as avocado or something. What? You saw what that story? This? No. Did you see the story? It was a Washington Post story about him and his wife. And normally I don't care about the spouses of candidates. But the story is mostly about how he's a weirdo. How he yeah. likes to prank his wife, and apparently he took like one of his kids' diaper diaper turds oh. and put it in a bowl and told her that it was avocado. And also, in the last few months, apparently he went to New Mexico and he ate dirt. I'm not kidding you. It says this in the story. Like to recover from his loss to Ted Cruz, he ate. Re it was supposed to restore what? sustenance to him. He went and he ate dirt. No, that was just a spin on the story. He lost a bet and Ted Cruz was making him eat the dirt. Going, now, now, eat the dirt. <laughs> that's right. E. coli. I don't know why he sounds like George Bush Sr. Uh, I, the poo thing, though, is that could, you can die. That's disturbing. He could have killed it. It's like cinnamon challenge with also, death. <laughs> also, I mean, if you want to piss off the millennials, all, I mean, that substituting poo for avocado, that'll piss off all the millennials. Do not admit, what's he going to do next time? He's going to he's going to take a rabbit poop to substitute for single origin coffee and just put it in a coffee house, <laughs> do a pour over. Like, well, my, you, you were supposed to be on our side, Beto. All right, the book is, I want to make sure I have the title, uh, The Right Side of History, How Reason and Moral Purpose Made the Great West. The show is Ben Shapiro's show on Daily Wire. Of course, he's the editor-in-chief of Daily Wire. All right, Mr. Bed Daily Wire, appreciate it. You must go. Catch you later. See ya. We'll be back, wrapping it up. The bitter part of history, diseases are we raging. Measles, mumps up on your junk like they were Kevin Spacey. Cause we got Apu inflammation. I really need work. We've got Apu inflammation. Take your jobs elsewhere, Amazon. We got Apu inflammation. And that's how you run the global economy. We've Our technological advancement as a society has outpaced our system for handling finite resources because now we are approaching approaching infinite resources. Nailed it. I'm like really good at this stuff. I run this board. I'm the boss. What if I ran for president? I'd be like a super genius president. I'd be like one of those baby geniuses from the movie President. I wonder if there's a sale at Forever 21. Join Mug Club today. Only $99 a year, $69 for students, veterans, or active military. old favorite for people who are audio listeners only from years that's the greg luganis ah, turning dance uh, i see a platform diver who hit his back uh hit back of his head on the board and uh spilled aids all over the olympic pool yep. Yep. and he was played by louis diamond phillips i believe i believe he was played by louis diamond phillips he might have been played by uh mario lopez and the made for tv film hmm. point is his life is not very good yeah. And uh, anyway, <laughs> Greg Luganis. Greg Luganis. And helpful. then at, for a long time when I was young, I remember I read this story in Sports Illustrated for Kids, which just tells you how horribly inappropriate that magazine was. And uh, I confused Greg Luganis. I thought Lou Gehrig's disease was named after the guy who um, had AIDS who hit his head. That guy was a baseball the back. player. Yeah, I know. It's Obviously, I was incorrect. Oh, okay. Because I had heard about <laughs> Greg Luganis before Lou Gehrig. <laughs> 
thank you so much to Ben Shapiro. Yeah. Uh, really appreciate him being on the show. Uh, speaking of AIDS, by the way, there's going to be uh, some AIDS walks going on across yes. the country this weekend. And so, you know, who knows? Maybe someone will show up. Yeah. Um, big shows next week. We're really looking forward to it. Hey, one thing. I know this is a segment that we often do. I, I wanted to talk with you guys about a couple of things today. I know I'm not supposed to read the comment sections, and I usually don't on social media. Uh, obviously, people who, who are Mug Club members, that's a little bit different. We can interact with people there. But that Too Cute Maddie, can you bring up the overlay here? This is one thing that I did see recently in the Amy Schumer special. This person said, uh, I would love to join, but I've been taking care of my mom for the last two years. Two weeks ago, informed us that she only has three to six months left. COPD sucks. I'll eventually join to support them, meaning us, but... For this time, uh, YouTube will have to suffice. And uh, this other person, just username, we've uh, eliminated any private info here, though they did post it on YouTube, ill-advised, yeah. uh, <laughs> said, God bless you. I'd like to send you the money to sign up for Mug Club. And if you wa read the rest of these comments, you can bring it down to Maddie. People uh, can see it. If you're listening to audio version, I encourage you to go watch the video. Um, first off, we're going to get you. Uh, we appreciate that our fans are trying to support each other. We're going to get you, obviously, uh, hooked up with, with Mug Club. We'll make sure, we'll find your email, we'll track you down, and we'll make sure that you're taken care of. We, we really appreciate you. the sentiment. Um, but seeing our fans, you act that way, knowing that the, that, that is true, it's indicative of the bulk of you who tune into this show, it really does. You know, I know as I get older it sounds, but it, it really does warm my heart. I think it, it warms all of our cockles. Yeah. We shouldn't does. use that term, but I use it anyway. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Well, you should be. You should be, but not because of that. Um, so two things I wanted to talk about today. The first thing is esteeming others for serving other people first. So let me tell you a story. Uh, this last weekend, I went to Florida with my wife to visit the in-laws. Love my in-laws. Great, great people. I'm very fortunate in that respect. Um, the first day, we were fighting quite a bit, arguing quite a bit. And this tends to ha I don't know if you've noticed this, the first day of vacation, if this tends oh, to yeah. happen. The first day of vacation, like when I, my wife and I, when we used to live in different states before we were married, the first day, we would always be arguing, and usually the last day. And... I think it's because of one very simple, we're, we're, human beings are selfish. And so you have your way of doing things or your expectations. And then you're locked in a room with someone basically or a tube in the sky and you're staying in the same room in your in-laws apartments. And you find out that you, you really can't do things the way that you've been wanting to do them. And the next, I will say this, the next two days on our, our, our trip were great because we consciously decided that rather than push and pull and bump heads, that we would serve each other first. And this is a challenge I would like to issue to everyone out there. Because I, we get a lot of life advice questions when we do those segments behind the, the paywall. I want to challenge you for one week, one week, to focus on serving other people. And that brings me to my second point, and one that I think might be a little bit uncomfortable for a lot of people. Serving others first, thinking of others first. Um, it also gets you out of the rhythm that we all fall into of getting what we deserve. You can call it entitlement. Uh, we all feel it to a certain degree. We're all so focused on getting what we deserve, on what we rightfully have coming to us, only... Have you ever actually thought about that? So there were other comments uh, uh, on the Amy Schumer special teaser, which I'll be honest about, pissed me off a little bit. People complaining about the fact that Mug Club exists, right? People saying, well, why can't you just upload it all for free? I'm not, I'm, not paying for, I'm not paying for Mug Club, I don't have the money. And when I read that, I got pissed for a few reasons. Some are valid, and I realized some of them are my own issues. Uh, valid ones, for example, we literally couldn't upload yesterday's Amy Schumer yeah. review. We tested it on a private mm -hmm. stream. YouTube immediately struck the video and revoked this private channel's live streaming privileges. It's not just about demonetization anymore. It's outright banning. Sometimes yes. we simply can't get the show up. You saw it with the Oscars. The trailer itself demonetized the second it was uploaded right. and done. But it's far worse than that so when they just, just don't that. let you upload the review. Yes. It's, it's, it's not even just about you not receiving notifications, even though you opted in two, three, four, five times, some of you out there. So please bookmark yes. the page and keep checking in. Sometimes we just can't do it. Another thing, we've always created exclusive content like The Daily Show for people who are Mug Club members uh, because we wanted to provide everyone with more free content. Mug Club is the only one anyone here survives. So that's why not everything goes up for free. And sometimes I'll read these comments and I think, well, you know what? Maybe you, know what? Maybe you don't deserve this show. Maybe if you don't join Mug Club, the show might go away. If you're not willing to step up, the show will go away forever. You'll log into your Facebook, and that's what you deserve. But if I'm being honest, neither do I. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this show. I don't deserve for the, I don't deserve the many of you out there to give me your hard-earned money so that I and everyone here can continue to create and perform this show for you. You know, sometimes this show is hard. Sometimes, yeah, people burn out. Sometimes you run into health issues. But, oh, my God, I don't deserve to get up every day and work, sure, maybe 10, 14 hours on creating something, but creating something that people love. For people who love me, who love this show, the people, you, who've created this platform, who've made this 
channel, the number one conservative channel in the history of YouTube. Why am I, I had to think about this myself, reading the comment, that's why you don't read the comment section. I go, wait, wait, why am I getting pissed? Because some people want to rip our content for free. I don't deserve any of this. It's a blessing. And when I think about what I deserve, ha have you ever really thought about that? I mean, really thought about it. When I think about it, I'll tell you, I'll be honest, it's scary. When I think of throughout my life, the mistakes I've made, the people I've hurt, whether on purpose or by accident, the ripple effect some of my misdeeds may have created, when I add it all up, do I really want what I deserve? Do you? Do any of us? And yeah, listen, to you, the guy, girl, or Z who doesn't want to support the show, you do. You deserve for this show to go away. You deserve to log into your YouTube account and go, oh, it's completely gone. I never get to watch it again. But you won't. That's not gonna, you know why? Because of grace. Because of the grace of other people. Because other people have paid the bill for you. And just like you saw in that comment earlier, it's from someone who's willing to help another person out. My point is this, none of us really want to get what we actually deserve, any of us. And we all like to think about what we've earned to what we're entitled, little, even sometimes the little joys in life that we deserve about treating yourself. But what, what about the, does it go both ways? What about the justice? What about the punishment? You think about what you deserve there? You know what, most, if not all of us, have never had to truly bear the brunt of what we deserve. And the only reason we don't is because of grace. Now, listen, I'm a Christian, okay? So I believe and I'm thankful for God's grace when it comes to the ultimate justice and punishment. But let's take it out of the meta metaphysical sense here, okay? In your day-to-day, -day, you don't receive what you truly deserve, often only through the grace of others. Usually by many others who lift your burdens, who serve your needs, and you probably don't even recognize it. I know most of us certainly don't appreciate it, it's why I see entitlement mindsets as so pervasively evil. You don't deserve, let me, hard truth here, you don't deserve your job. You have one by the grace of someone else who created a product, which stems from the grace of someone else who created a company, which stems from the grace of someone who created an industry, which stems from the grace of someone who graced the world with an idea. You don't deserve, you, don't, you do not deserve healthcare or an average life expectancy that's 20 to 30 years longer than your great grandfather. You receive it by the grace of someone else who is providing the procedure that you need, or, or the grace of someone who pioneered modern medicine, the grace of someone who took a risk that you yourself would likely probably never be willing to take. And I know right now we're talking about money exchanging hands. And so people will light up the comment section saying, well, it's not by grace, it's a profit motive, but th that's not entirely true. And by the way, you're, you're missing the point. Either way, let's go smaller with it. You don't deserve that coffee your wife or your husband made you this morning. You, often, you don't deserve the unwavering love or support that they give you. You receive it through grace. And, and, and it's for the same simple concept, by the way, that mandated entitlements destroy a nation. Take the concept, let's take the concept of universal income. I had to think about why do I hate this so much? It's predicated on the idea that you deserve the right to a basic universal income, regardless of worker ability. Sounds good, but how does it work? It only works by the grace of others. By the grace of others who did the work and who had their spoils taken from them at gunpoint. Nothing that you think you deserve when you trace it back far enough can stem from anything other than the grace of someone else. And this brings me back to my first point. Just as I think entitlement robs people of their spirit, of their soul, your own mindset of entitlement of what you deserve robs you of truly living a fulfilling life. Don't believe me? Try this for a week. Write this down, okay? Take some, grab a pen and paper if you're listening on the audio version. All of next week, live your life day to day to bestow grace upon and serve others for the whole week. In other words, this week, first thing when you wake up, think of how you can serve people you love the most. What do, you, what do you usually do? Grab yourself a cup of coffee, go for a jog? Nope, not this week. You're going to bring your wife a cup of coffee. You're going to get up earlier and help prepare your husband so that he can go for a jog before work. If you find yourself getting frustrated with things not going your way, okay, stop and ask yourself why your wife, your husband, your dad, your mom, whoever it is, the next guy down the line might be frustrated and help him to pave his way. Here, do you often find yourself getting sad? Depressed even? I've talked about this, I've struggled with it. Find someone else who's even more sad. Someone who has even more of a reason to be depressed. You know they're there. Cheer them up. One week, that's what I'm asking you to do. For one week, I want you to flip the switch on the day-to-day -day of making sure that you get what you deserve and make sure that you are living a life to serve others. One week, do that every waking moment. Tell me it doesn't change your life. Tell me it doesn't change your entire perspective. Comment, let me know. The fact is this, if 
for the people out there who commented on this, if you don't join Mug Club and support this program, listen, you, you don't deserve this show. Um, anything that you enjoy is enjoyed by the grace of others who've paid the bill. Just as certainly, I don't deserve your support. I don't. You pay my bills. You pay all of our bills. You feed all of our families. I don't deserve the blessing that is the ability to employ a dozen people and to create this show for you every day. I receive support by your grace, and I try to serve you as best as I can every day. And you know what? I hope I'll be around here another decade from now, able to serve you through your grace. And more importantly, I really want to see more of what I saw in that comment section of people helping someone else out. More of you mug clubbers, subscribers, supporters, bestowing grace on each other. Because you know what? That's what makes you different from a lot of these other channels. It's not about what you deserve. It's about what you give. One week. Use that comment as a model. Try it out. Let me know how it turns out for you. I'll see you next week. It only takes